What's going on guys and welcome back to the log. The log? <laughs> what the hell is a log? <laughs> yeah guys, the whole studio, the second studio we're in now is coming along really, really well. I'm happy that everything's progressing. The tanks behind me have just got water and plants in. They have had for a, a couple of weeks now and that's not good. There's no sort of water movement. The plants aren't in any sort of substrates. So there's no beneficial bacteria. There is obviously a small amount colonizing on the plants, but not enough. The water's becoming stagnant. Now my filters have finally arrived, so I can now get them kitted out properly with some filters in them, some soil on the bottom, get those plants with some roots going into the bottom, and just have some extra setups for some fish because I've got some more coming. And you can see here guys, look, so the stagnant water is causing, you know, a little bit of algae to be coming on the leaves. Now this is the type of stuff that you could literally swish off with, swish or swoosh, you know what I mean? Dip it in a bucket, rub it with your finger, it'll all come off. But look at this Alternanthra, is that the Rosen, Rosen Vig? Yeah, it's coming up the top. <laughs> that has grown so quickly, really, really good. It'll be going, all of these will be going in setups at some point, but at the moment they're just in here as storage and it has worked really well. It's only at this point after several weeks now, look, you can see I actually drained some of this, but um, and then I stopped because I thought, well, I should explain what I'm actually doing. But you can see it's, it's getting to that point now where everything needs refreshing. So drain all the water out, put all the plants in a tub, clean the tanks out with a wipe down, not like properly clean, no, no bleach, <laughs> nothing like that. and then just fill them back up again and put them back in with the filtration and that should keep them looking really good because obviously these are exactly the same tanks but they've got the filtration and we don't get algae. But what we do get is super cute little crystal red shrimpies and just doing all their little lovely job look. Look at these ones down here. Where's the beastie ones? There we go, look, back filter right at the back there. Those are massive. They look as big as the ones close up but that's something called perspective. They are absolutely huge. Okay, there we go. So you can see that I'm just filling up this tank and I've just put like a couple of scoops of aqua soil in the bottom, fill it up with water, then we can just add our sponges in straight away and use some, I'm going to squeeze these ones out into the water. So that means it's into, I should probably turn that off, shouldn't I? Whoa. So that's number two filling up. Now I've got all the plants down here in this bucket with the water that was in there. I'll, you know, rinse off all the leaves. If a leaf is healthy, you can be a little bit sort of rough with it. Not too rough, but you know, you can run fingers over it. Look, it's all healthy and nothing's going to break off. If anything breaks off, it's probably because it's just almost sort of like a dead leaf or something anyway. So don't be afraid to get your hands in there on your leaves. <laughs> So that's all the soil in, the plants are in. I've got filters on two of the aquariums, but I'm still waiting on some hair, uh, hairline hairline hose. I just can't talk. Hairline hose. Uh, I'm waiting on some valves as well, like to singly change each and every uh, piece of tube. I don't know. I don't know the technical terms for all this. This is my first time actually using a sponge filter system where it's air driven. So I've never actually used it before, but it works really well when you've got lots and lots of tanks and you know, not many plug sockets. I mean, you can always add like a million extension leads, but how safe is that? Right. With what I've currently got here, I've got four plugs on the lights and I've got one plug then on for the air, air driven air pump for the filters. Well, we got there in the end. I managed to get that out. Congratulations. Right guys, so I have got here with me the um, the second fish that's going to be going on the nano fish rack, which is that that one. So the first fish was the clown killifish, and now I've got lampi killifish. Not the rarest of killifish. I think you can pick them up in most shops, but I quite I kind of like getting fish that you can get regularly available because you guys can get them as well. And also, these have always caught my eye. <laughs> Excuse the pun. They've got really shiny eyes. That's that's what I meant by that. <laughs> it's not even a pun, is it? It's just some. Anyway, right. I want to do a cool skate for them. I think the idea behind any fish you see with sort of neony parts to them is because they are kind of from like darker waters. Therefore, the the eyes glisten. They catch the the attention of the male females for sexing, basically. I guess that's that's my guess. I guess a lot. I do that. I will do that. So I want to do kind of like a dark scape. 
a leaf litter one. I'm gonna have plenty of bright ones on this tank uh, rack anyway. At the moment though, there'll be no scapes. I just wanna get them in, you know, make sure they don't all die because that's happened, as you all know. So let's get them in the tank. Only one of these tanks has actually got a filter running on it because I was waiting for the other stuff to arrive. But yeah, just, just put them in. And then over at the Better Fish Sorority Aquarium, things are actually doing really well. The cleanup crew that I had last time is really taking effect. I mean, there's still some algae about. It's gonna take time for everything sort of settles in per perfectly. But for now, it's doing the job and we're winning. I also raised the light because it was, you know, probably that was the cause really of the algae boom. To get algae in your tank within a few days of all fresh water going in, it has to be that the light's too intense. So hopefully the, the stuff we've done now can actually stop that, especially with the floating plants. You know, they pull tons of nutrients out of the water column because they're not, they're not in soil, are they? So the, the only place they can get their nutrients from is the water column. Now, another thing everyone was a bit concerned about was the stress stripes on the female betters. Now, this is something I'd never actually heard of. I think I found the reason why we're seeing them. So I don't really tend to see them until I come up to the tank. For instance, when I'm stood back and I've, I've done this off camera just to observe, they go away, they don't have these stress stripes. But when I come up to the tank with this big sort of reflective lens and pointing at it, the, the better fish, are, they know that I'm there straight away. They're very clever, these fish. Better fish know what's outside the tank, what's inside the tank, you know, more so than most other fish as well, to be honest. Given their size, you'd have thought their brains would be tiny, but I guess that's just not the case. But that said, we are winning the war against the algae. You just have to do a little bit more manual removal. It's just get your hands in there, pull out bits you can, rub off stuff you can, water changes, that kind of thing. And it won't be long before you are winning. If you're not, then again, look back at the light situation, raise it up a little bit, or block off some LEDs with some black tape, whatever you need to do to get that light down if it's too intense. Most of the time on startup though, it is just a case of the plants aren't bedded in yet. So the fishes are now acclimated. Let's get these bad boys in that tank. Bad boys? I Okay, they're in, they're looking really good. Their eyes actually are a lot sort of brighter than I thought they would be straight away. You know, they've just come out of the bag, been moved around, there's gonna be some stress levels there, but they look really good against that dark substrate, didn't they? And also against the dark greens of say, the, the moss balls and the java fern at the back there. Oh, by the way, something coming soon for those moss balls. But yeah, this again, this is just their temporary sort of tank. Well, it will be, it will be their tank, but I'll have a much better scape set up for them. And look at that Alton Amphora growing right out the top now. <laughs> it's looking really, really good good really vibrant love it so those guys are looking great and we really are starting to build up our collection now there's two nano fish what other nano fish would you guys like to see on this racking system here i've got a few in mind i really want those uh green chili not chili green resporas you know like they're tiny and they're like lime green they're so cool lime green is my favorite color by the way as you probably guessed from the logo of the channel also want to get some celestial pearl danios i think they'll be a really good addition i've struggled to find them though recently i can't find them anywhere like it's always hard to find those fish in my area but I'm used to ordering stuff online now, so maybe I could just do it that way. Probably will. Another thing I'm looking forward to getting at some point is bumblebee gobies. I've got some bigger tanks coming, that because apparently you need about 20 gallons for those. Um, I'm not sure why, they're tiny, but you know, if that's what you need, that's what you need. I actually went online the other day, was looking through the list of the fish. I nearly bought about 20 different species, but I just had to pull myself, rein myself back in. Not yet, not yet, get more set up first. And all of that is coming. You'll see in the next vlog video anyway. So I'm back over at the discus tank, guys. It's early in the morning, the lights have only just come on, but good news. So all of the uh, blue-green algae that we were seeing on the bottom substrate here, or decorative sand, that is all now completely gone, which is awesome. Now I said to you guys in the previous video that I was gonna uh, separate the pair and put them in another tank. Well, I'm definitely gonna do that. So many of you in the comments were saying that I need to have white background, white sponges for optimum success. 
not disputing that at all, but you've got to remember that I'm a hobbyist and I want to enjoy my aquariums as much as like any potential breeding. So what I'm going to do is do a really cool little black water skate, a little bit of wood in it, you know, just black background. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That way I can just enjoy the hobby how I want to enjoy it. I'm not saying that's the best method. I know it's probably not because otherwise breeders would be doing it. But in a previous video, I actually had a comment from someone who's been breeding discus for 35 years and they said they had better success in a slightly bigger tank that was planted uh, than, than, in a, than in a system that was smaller with the white background and everything like that. So it just goes to show what there isn't one hard, fast rule, is there? So I'm going to try it this way and hopefully we get some babies out of it and we can just enjoy the tank as well and the pair. But ultimately though, it's gonna yield better success than the current situation and we can really enjoy this discus pair moving forward. Well, that is it for this one, guys. If you haven't already, click the like, click the subscribe button and I will see you on the next one. Where am I going?